Do your neighbors judge you when you run around like a madman to the mailbox? Are you spending the last of your paycheck on a book of stamps? Do you find yourself printing form letters at 3 o'clock in the morning? Well, welcome to Autographers Anonymous. Welcome to Autographers Anonymous, a place where we discuss our addiction to the greatest hobby in the world. Here are your hosts, Andy Summers, Chase and Inc., Mike the Godfather, and yours truly, Zane Savage. And let's start the show off with TTMs of the week, and there's been a lot of talk because we added a lot of prizes to the Legends lot. Before we get into the new prizes that are going to be won by the main winner, let's talk about who won the last show uh, on TTM of the Weeks, and that is Mark Donahue. Congratulations, Mark. He won with a Quincy Jones TTM return, and you can see that right here, and it's amazingness. Check it out. It's awesome. And uh, we, have, we have some new rules to announce to this because we have, we've had a lot of entries. We actually had more entries in this than we have had our giveaway. So uh, we do want to add a couple of stipulations. If you are a co-host, sadly, or a guest host, we, we cannot accept entries from you. I know the price pool is getting very seductive, but uh, that's just the rules. You know, we don't want to have any biases. So um, no co-hosts, no guest hosts can enter. And if you win, you have to wait one show to enter again so let's say we announce you're winning on this show um you can't enter for the next one you take one off and then you can enter again that just kind of gives everybody an even chance to get entries in um so those are the new rules and let's go over what's available now the legends lot has grown <laughs> to 12 autographs and it's pretty crazy guys um i did some inventory stuff uh, i was making mats and i came across some damaged autographs some stuff with flaws and some matte flaws and i was like you know what these are going to be hard to sell i'm just going to go ahead and put them in the lot uh they're still autographed they're authentic autographs but they have some damaged stuff so first obviously wayne gretzky we've talked about this one before this used to be on a hat but uh i matted it so it looks a not a lot nicer this way so wayne gretzky's the first one then we move on to gordy howe Matt Peace, so two of the greatest hockey players of all time. Then we have Bill Russell, 11-time NBA champion. Then we move on to Magic Johnson, and here's where we start getting into some flaws. This is a rare uh, Magic Johnson full signature, by the way, but you have some rubbing, um, actually some smudging and bubbling. So uh, the signature is not great, but... Uh, it's there, so you will be getting a Magic Johnson. And Kareem, nice Kareem Abdul-Jabbar mat piece. And this actually works for film fans and basketball fans because it's a photo of him and Bruce Lee. Then we move on to Nolan Ryan and one of my favorite photos to Matt, him beating the crap out of Robin Ventura. So there's that. Then we have Joe Namath. And again, a famous photo of him putting the number one in the air. So, And I wanted to expand it past sports. Uh, I know not everybody's a sports fan, and some people who are into movies and space might want to get in on this. So we have a Sally ride. Um, there are a few flaws with this. Uh, somebody actually took like a washable marker and marked over it. I tried to get it off as best as possible, but you can still see there's a lot of smudging on the signature. But it's still signed by Sally Ride. So uh, I think it was a library or somebody that just tried to mark something out. Um, and you also have some flaws on the map piece itself. Uh, but overall, it's cool. I, I, I figured, why not? I mean, I'm probably not going to be able to sell it. Why not throw it in this lot? And a Moonwalker, Jim Irwin, matted right there. The problem with this, it's got a tear into the signature right there. So again, it's going to be hard to sell that. So I'm throwing it in the lot. Then we have Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter, for you film buffs, and Brian Cranston, Breaking Bad. So those are 11, and you might be asking yourself, what's the 12th? Mikey, you want to show them what they get for the 12th? This will be going to Mr. Savage to be matted, but it's Bart Starr. As you can see in the photo, it's personalized to Glenn, and looks like somebody tried to remove the personalization. This is more of a cardstock, 
and instead of a glossy photo so it didn't come off and so it, it's flawed the signature is bold and beautiful though that's awesome and yeah, that's nice. gonna look great matted so that's 12 signatures you're talking about literal legends of their fields and uh the winner of ttm of the season will win all of those one winner takes all uh, but to win you have to win ttm of the weeks so you have to enter guys so if you want to enter that just go to our website graffersaa.com it's graffersaa.com submit the form it has to have social media proof and uh, yeah, you might win that giant lot of awesome legend autographs. So let's move on to returns. What you got, Mikey? All right, got a few things in this week. Got a package from our friend Scott over at Reindeer Studios. And I can't show it because it's already been sold. Uh, when he gets a doodle <laughs> in, he graciously donates it to Autographs for a Cure and they sell almost instantly uh, as soon as he posts a video which i have a link on my site to his youtube channel he posts it somebody contacts me and it was gone uh it was doug Desenzo, the uh, former chicago cub outfielder so it's thank crazy. you scott for that <laughs> all right um i don't think i got any purchases in this week so ttms don't worry i'll make up for your purchases <laughs> um i tried Mike Piazza returned in my SASE. Uh, what I've been doing is finding some private addresses, trying them. Why not? 50 cents. <laughs> uh, got a refusal return to sender from uh, Dwight Evans, Red Sox star. So I think those were the, the duds. Uh, got a few returns. This one's pretty cool. Uh, NBA great. Bruce Bowen played with the uh, Spurs, won three championships, and a couple of cool shots here. There's Garden LeBron and Garden Kobe. Hall of Famer? Uh, not Famer. yet. No, he's a Spurs Hall of Famer. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure he is. <laughs> um, wrestling return, Mr. Wrestling 2. There was a couple of them, variations, old school stuff, but found cool shot, old school Arn Anderson. It's good to know with my physique, I could have been a professional wrestler back in 1990. <laughs> back in the day, throw a mask on you, you'd be fine. Yeah. Reach for those dreams. Go for it. <laughs> so that one's pretty cool. Uh, this one, you got, if you listened to the last show, you guys know I was collecting the Miracle on Ice team. I added Al Michaels, and these are the two photos that I had every player sign. Uh, of course, he made the famous call, Do You Believe in Miracles? Uh, this is just a cool art shot. And here's the actual them winning. So I signed four for the Miracle on Ice. I thought you completed that, Mike. I did. <laughs> the players are done. always add a few here and there. No, you got to go for the Russian announcers now. Uh, the this, Russian this, team. This person I actually got in the one stands. Out. Yeah, I got one to the, the Russian uh, goaltender that was pulled, so working on it. <laughs> and the last, last two uh, wrestling returns, these are current wrestlers. This is Orange Cassidy. And if you don't know anything about his gimmick, it's awesome. <laughs> but he's wrestling for AEW right now. This is a big return because this is not a published address. Sign three. So two of those will be going for sale, but he also agreed to sign some additional 8x10 photos. I think I showed this before. This is my mm -hmm. RSVP. Um, so he marked that he would sign some additional stuff and then signed it there. So I actually got those going out tomorrow. Awesome. So Orange Cassidy. And then uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan Grace was, is another wrestler. She wrestles for Impact Wrestling. Um, short story, she, somebody wrote to her house and she got a little, uh, a little testy on social medias and gave out a uh, P.O. box. And these were sent to the P.O. box. I was not the person that sent to her house. Mm -hmm. but, uh, she is the current TNA Women's Champion. She is with Tessa Blanchard. 
and they do a lot of intergender stuff. There's Brian Cage. I uh, sent this little card here. Basically, you can follow her on Twitter, where if you send to her house, she will rip you a new one. Um, she <laughs> yeah, also you don't, want, you don't want to make your wrestler mad. No, <laughs> but she also agreed to sign some additional eight by ten. So I've ordered those, and uh, we'll get those out to her when they come in. So uh, that's it, Mister Summers. Man, great returns. I'm loving the RSVP cards. <laughs> I like those. All right, let's see. First one, I'm going to start off with a little strange one. They found a bunch of old cards for a guy named Gary Surum, I believe his name is. For a rare thing in my letter, I asked him where he got his nickname from, and he wrote me a long paragraph, like page of where his nickname came from, nice. which was, uh, I feel what it was, Tully or something like that. Uh, True Tit. I'm sorry, that was his name, True Tit. And the funny thing is, he wrote me all this, but he never signed the card. Oh. So he was too busy writing the letter and did nothing with the card. So I guess you could probably buy the card on eBay for a dollar. Anyway. Oh, this thing is beat the hell. Out. Like it's creased all over. So I'm going to probably send that back to True Tit and see if he'll <laughs> sign it. Next one, I got a little conspiracy ones that got in. I got these two on the same day. I sent them at two different times, but the, this is coming back from Oklahoma City. It's Robin Ventura, okay? Normally would be okay for the set, would be great. On the same exact day from Oklahoma City, I got Matt Holiday. They're both coaches on Matt Holiday's brother's Oklahoma Sooners baseball team. No one's been there for months. And I got them back from the same place on the same day, and the, paint, the ink is exactly the same, and ne none of the autographs match their regular autographs. So some grad student over there is starting to sign all their mail. So yep. coach's assistant. Yeah. I met the, the, the kid that throws bat in practice. So beware <laughs> if you get those back from Oklahoma. The Check case them out before you, yeah. Before you get really excited, like I did and then really look at them went, Oh crap. The case yep. against Oklahoma. Yeah. Yep. So there's a lot uh, of, there's a lot of things you can, mind. I'm not going to bash yeah. Oklahoma. <laughs> um, Next in, Baseball Hall of Famer, I guess, uh, Harold Baines. These have been out for a couple of years, but he's been signing his mail. Um, now, if you actually add a donation, he signs a lot faster. I think it's like eight days. Pulling the old uh, the, uh, Robert uh, England. That's what Robert England does. Right. Yeah. Next, uh, hockey player, Brian Proop. He signed four cards. And he sent me back a business card, and he signed a biz, um, index card, but I never realized, I mean, he played 1,016 games, and he's 1,004 points, which I never realized how good he actually was. 425 goals he added on there. So, for a guy that's not in the Hall of Fame, I think he did A-OK. -okay. Yeah. All right. Next, I sent this CEO a email, and I got a – letter back or email back from this executive assistant saying, well, everything in the world is going haywire. If he has a little bit of time, we'll send you something. And it did show up. His name is Chris Kapazinski and he's the CEO president of McNoddles. Oh, so that one's a little different. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Any uh, fans of the Goldbergs? I sent yeah. a request and the kid that plays Adam Goldberg, he sent me this picture. Uh, that doesn't and, look anything like Bill Goldberg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the funny thing is with this one, I didn't realize until afterwards, I asked him a question because I had just watched an episode that his mom gave him the Pee Wee Herman bike for his birthday. And I asked him what it was like to ride that bike. And he wrote back a letter on the back saying that it was a thrill to walk to basically uh, spent the whole weekend riding it before filming. He watched Pee Wee's Big Adventure a few times to learn how to ride it. And he said it was terrible to turn. <laughs> but it was an honor to ride that bike. So I kind of like that. I just sent off to his sister, who's also signs. Cool. This one is a seven-year return. I guess he's been sitting around doing nothing. But it's part of the Earnhardt family. Kenny. Uh, Carrie. Oh, Carrie. Carrie. Carrie Earnhardt. 
sent me that one and the big color 10 by 8. Uh, those are usually eight and a half by 11s. Yeah, they're, yeah, when they're going like the full the sideways. Yeah. Next is this was an old uh, TTM that I just sent out. This guy took about a, nine days. His name is Josh Mosel. I forget where he played, but he was in Big Daddy. It's an old VHS cover that I sent. Well, you don't see VHS covers signed very no, often. No, well, I think I sent this probably about 10 years ago. Oh, oh really? Did you prep yeah. it? No. Really? And it was in my RTS pile. So I said, screw it. I'll just, I'm trying to eliminate my RTS pile. Right. But he sent me back a nice message. And he said that, it was, that his father, Zero Mosel. Oh, yeah. This guy looks really familiar. Yeah, he was in the producers, uh, the 1970s version. Okay, because I saw the picture. I'm like, this guy looks me. I, I he, guess it's he, his, his autograph's worth a decent amount of money. I'm guessing he's no longer with the... No, he died in like the 70s, I think, the 80s. Yeah, Zero. Uh, I've, I've had a signature before. It's he's, He was a famous Broadway guy. Okay. Yeah, and I just kept staring at him. I'm like, I know this guy from someplace, and I mm-hmm. couldn't place it. Yep. Next, I tried this guy one other time. RTS, but I found another new address for him. His name is Vadimir... Orzotsky the third he's actually known as the lead singer of five for fighting oh cool so, so sent them the um what do you call it cd the cover cd, yeah, CD, CD. cover so yeah. you kids back there you know wow he CD. inscribed that whole cover <laughs> yeah and he he included he signed the back of my letter too cool so he went a little fuck wild but i guess we're friends because it says your friend yeah, best friends. We're, we're getting close Congratulations. now. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that up to 1,000 now? Friends? Yeah. <laughs> Next, Richie Gurren, Basketball Hall of Famer. Sign my basketball piece. And a couple more here. Yeah. This was another individual that I had sent to two other times. I could never find him, and I finally did. His name is Willie Santos. He's a professional skateboarder. He signed a couple of these little tricks. He signed it right at the top. Now, would you rather have the box signed or the actual skateboard? Um, the box. The box. Right. Now That's I'm cool. thinking about the skateboard thing that I never thought of before. <laughs> but the, he, his store is called the Willie's Workshop, and he sent me a baggie of goodies. I mean, there's stickers, there's a little mini poster, there's buttons, and a little like army guy riding a skateboard. Like when but he's the guy that ran the company. He's like a skateboarder that ran the company. Yeah, no, it's his company. Okay, so like that idea is actually pretty good to send those little skateboards out to people that skateboard. Like, yeah, that's a good idea. And it's like little decals for your skateboard, but here's the little little homie guy. Uh, that's cool. So it was, you know, again, you never know what these guys are gonna send out to you as extras. And don't and... try to stick don't try to stick skateboards in PWEs, people. <laughs> yeah. I know you're gonna try to do it. Don't do it. Little mailer. Yeah, you'll get pieces and pieces of your skateboard back. Yeah. Uh, next, I paid the fee for the Hall of Famer. I sent the Ryan Sandler again. Sent them, I think, 20 bucks because I sent them an oddball item. But he signed that reprint uh, Phillies card. Oh, wow. That's Sandberg? Yeah. Well, he was drafted by the Phillies. No, I mean, like, the signature. He's changed yeah. his signature. Uh, it's messy as all hell. Yeah, but it's like, I don't know. It looks different. He just loops. That's like coming out of Oklahoma, is it? No, yeah, right. But um, the other item he sent, I sent them a Nintendo game from Bases Loaded 3. That one looks, yeah, that one looks more like it. Yeah, so he scribbled on that one, which I didn't realize that he was on this, but I was kind of checking around for some oddball items. That is really cool. Your kid's like, where'd my video game go, Dad? Yeah, right. (laughs) I remember playing that. That's the best part. And so I didn't stop there. I got one more game in of Alex Trebek from Jeopardy. Nice. So I think this is going to be my new little hobby uh, project number 94. Dude, that I'm is a cool one. These. I like that... these. I mean, the, you can. I think I paid like 85 cents and like $3 to ship it. And, and I guarantee you 100% that you could take that inscription off. Like it's known that on those cartridges you can take ink off because people used to write them all the time. Why so, would I want to take it off? I just got it. I'm just saying, Alex Trebek's not doing great. And you got an Alex Trebek signed game. Off. If for some reason some alcohol accidentally fell onto your game, 
Uh, you might just wipe have... it off. If it sure. falls on, just wipe it off. When I just take yeah, all just these pictures the and just wipe off. the shit off on of them too. <laughs> what? Oh man! All right, I'm done. That's good. All right, <laughs> Chase, Thanks. what do you got? I, I'm I'm mad now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I got two here that, that actually are my sons, so I'm going to show them off first. He got some uh, NASA returns back. The first one from David Helmer. There's one. And then he gets a NASA logo, and he gets a photo of them. No rocket also, picture? <laughs> no, no rocket picture or no no shuttle picture. But uh, he also asked – he has, like, four little questions he asked, and uh, on both of these he got – the questions back and uh, all filled out, so it's pretty cool. The next one is uh, Lauren Shriver, and he added all his missions there. So there's that one, and then the same for the NASA logo. So you gonna do any multi uh, multi autograph pieces with the NASA logo? I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them right now. I got them in a little a little book that's. Especially the ones that have the missions written on them, you can right send here. to multiple people that did those missions. Like, and then he's got, you know, get them like that. Yeah, totally. So that's what we're doing right now with them. We'll see as it goes. Because you probably have to repeat people that you've already sent to. Yeah, um, I thought about doing because he's got one back from two of the guys who's on Skylab three, I think it was or mm -hmm. whatever, and thought about doing like a. Uh, like a, a Henry S. Um, was it a first day cover? Yeah, first day cover. Yeah, right? getting both of them on that or something. But I don't know. Hadn't looked at it cool. that much. Yep. So I got in uh, four from Dennis Lamp. That one is the best of the signatures. Or they got pretty smudged. But uh -oh. the meat man. I don't know if you. So that mustache was hanging down and smeared it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> no, the or first maybe... time I ever found that address, he was working at like a supermarket as like a. Oh yeah, no, this isn't the really supermarket the address. Butcher, but... He was like that butch, the head, the meat department manager. Uh, oh. Seafood, I thought, but yeah, something oh. like that. Yeah. I thought it would be awkward to send to a supermarket and like his actual work and. Well, yeah, that... I, some place would be appropriate and some wouldn't. I would yeah, say. I wasn't gonna do that one. Yeah. I just I couldn't bring myself to it. Sent the fee in, got a get the weight box for my set. Is he only signing with the fee now? Yeah. Okay. Well, he stopped least, for a bit, but he he kind of goes back and forth. Yeah. And the fee kind of varies. So. Well, is it this famous um, drinking? He's probably. <laughs> what level of inebriation is he? Well, at? <laughs> especially now. I mean, because his fee goes to the hospital, the Tampa hospital. Mm -hmm. So I mean, now they especially probably need it. Yeah. So. Totally. Got one back from David Segui, and he filled out my Q&A. My first autograph I pulled out of a pack, David Segui. 1997, 98. The white card? Yeah, it was uh, actually, it might have been later. It might have been 99. It was uh, autographics, maybe. Oh. Uh, baseball autographics. Yes. Two from Tom Treblehorn. Uh, got back Jim Essen, who was... This is for the set. I've been putting the managers on these little sticker cards. So he managed a few games for the Cubs. I tried to figure uh, out his signature for yeah. like a month and then I finally posted it and everybody got it instantly. Because he was on that baseball that had a million signatures. Right. I couldn't figure his out. Where did you find that address? Um, Star Tiger. Yeah, you're welcome. I put that there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to make up for the points that he loses in requests. Hey, I'm over a thousand <laughs> points, by the way. I just looked the other day. <laughs> All right, I'll be sure and go back and hit you a thank you on that. I'm, I'm on the point. <laughs> hugely on the plus side on that now. So for the record, uh, Bobby Witt and uh, he uh, filled out a Q and A. I, I got, can't believe uh, how good his son has been signing, by the way. Right. Yeah, I, I, I heard still, that window close though. I heard did it. Well, did back it? now unsigned I, I, from both. I just sent one out, so it'll probably come back unsigned then. Um, got. Dick Egan, he was a Rangers coach at one point. This is minor league, but he was in a uh, mother's cookies set that I got. <laughs> I was straight from a, a giveaway in 1989.
Yeah, for you uh, kids out there, baseball cards were so popular in the late 80s that like every company had a version of baseball card they put out. And some even had autograph sets they put out, like Nabisco had uh, full yeah, yeah. autograph sets they put out. And they had poor Ernie Banks sign like 30,000 cards. <laughs> yeah, this one actually on the back of these actually has a little line for you to get an autograph right along the line. But... There you go. Everybody had a set uh, back then. And then, uh, let's see, I got Charles Nagy. Got in on that window. Here's one, two, and three. And then the last one here from the uh, umpire set. This is Drew, I guess that's Cobble. And then the bottom of the box cards that I picked up is the checklist. He signed the back of it since he was a uh, behind the plate umpire for two of the perfect games or not perfect. Yeah. Uh, no hitters Two of the no hitters that that's what the checklist is about. So nice. that's uh, all I've got for today. Okay. Well, I have a lot to show you guys. I have purchases that were for my personal collection. I have purchases that are for the business. And then I got my uh, signature cuts that uh, are from the inscriptions that I do on mats on. So uh, bear down. I'm going to try to fly through this stuff fast. Uh, I will take a little bit of time for the stuff I bought from my personal collection since it's for me. Um, the first piece I saw and I had to have it. Um, there's been a couple versions of this. There was a 1970s version and it's actually in a nice box, but they decorated it in a god awful 70s like felt and stuff. And you can just tell it was old, so I didn't buy that one. I bought the one from the 1920s, which is actually in certificate form. With uh, It's a relic uh, on the certificate. And it comes with the actual uh, envelope from the, I think it was the government that actually put this out and sold it. Uh, anyways, I framed it. So uh, here it is. Look at that. 1926 is when this was put out. Again, I had the envelope that it was shipped in. So this is actually a piece of wood from Independence Hall. They renovated it uh, in 18, let's see, 1892. So they took a bunch of wood from it and they chopped it up and made these. This is probably done by the postal service if I was to guess, because they, they, they tend to do this stuff back in the day. Um, there's actually on a totally unrelated note, well, semi unrelated note, there's a stamp you can get that was pressed by a um what do you call the the thing that presses down on the stamp the die the die was actually sent to the moon on apollo 11 and they used that die or embosser i don't even know what it's called they use that to make all these stamps and if you get like a first edition one it's very clear and it degrades over time so um they sold those stamps like crazy after you know 1969 or 1970s when those came out um okay so that's that not autograph related, but I, you know, people are interested in other things and autographs and it's kind of some crossover there. Let's get to the autographs. This is awesome. I've wanted this guy for a long time and it has a really cool inscription. So I finally got my posty. <laughs> I'm a big post Malone fan and uh, I've been wanting to posty for a while. And this one actually has the uh, new year's Eve inscri inscription. So N Y E uh, and then signed by posty there. And I had this frame and I never had an autograph to put in it that like would match because it's such a crazy like snake skin frame. And uh, I think I found the perfect photo. So finally got my posty. And let's move on to the purchases for the business. Um, I'll fly through these as fast as I can. Uh, some real high dollar stuff. Uh, this is Mitchell Lyson, a director from the 40s and 50s, I believe. Maybe earlier than that. Uh, this is Dan Beard. He created a group that was kind of like the Scouts, and they actually integrated into the Boy Scouts and became uh, the Boy Scouts eventually. I, I don't know how that exactly works, but he was an integral part of the Boy Scouts, we'll put it that way, uh, early 1900 signature. And then uh, this one's awesome, Coleman Hawkins, who is a big name in jazz. Uh, a lot of people say he was influential in moving stuff along. A lot of people base their music off him. So um, really rare signature there. Get a better view of that. Sorry, guys, the glare. There we go. And then let's move on to, I don't remember if I showed this last time. I don't think I did. 
This is the HP way. And this is actually signed by both Bill Hewitt and uh, Dave Packard right there on the book plate. So a uh, really rare piece. Um, you know, you don't find founders of giant companies very often. Um, so, and again, I don't know if I showed this last week. I don't think I did. Uh, I got the president and uh, comes with the COA from Premier Collectibles and signed on that book plate right there. So, um, get that in serial number to 10,000. So then got a Clarence Thomas signed book and, uh, it wasn't signed, but it did come with a signed letter. So then I was like, okay, this is probably going to be auto penned. Nope. Uh, he's basically, somebody wrote a positive article about him and he sent him a letter saying, thanks for the positive article. So <laughs> he actually wrote down here about it. Um, but the signature looks legit, not an auto pen version. So thank goodness, because there are a lot of auto pen Supreme Court justice signatures out there. So, so is he um, not used to uh, positive letters? Moving on, yeah. um, <laughs> we have Maurice Sendak. This is uh, the author of Where the Wild Things Are. And this is a signed limited edition of Zlata the Goat. Uh, the bad thing is, X library mm. but it's still you know a signed limited edition it'll still hold a decent value just won't go for as much as non X library books but signed right there with him and the, the co-author actually the author probably because uh, Marie Sendak was an illustrator for a long time so and obviously illustrated where the wild things are as long and wrote it so moving on well, the last one of the purchases for the business I've actually got several things, but I've already sold them. Uh, I'm moving stuff pretty quick right now. So I got another Bob Ross in. I was going to show you guys, but I sold it literally last night and he wanted priority shipping. So I apologize. I couldn't show that one off. This is Charles Scholes, the guy that uh, created Snoopy and Peanuts. And we got a full... He's known for gi gigantic inscriptions. And if, if you give Charles Scholes a gigantic book, it's going to be a super gigantic inscription. So right there, signed and inscribed by Mr. Schulz. Now, the thing about these, if you can find one that has a sketch in it, um, you, find, you have a $250 book and it goes over 1000 instantly if you got a sketch. So uh, be on the lookout for that if you are a dirty, dirty dealer. <laughs> um, OK. Now for the segment that uh, I like and nobody's clamoring for, uh, pieces of people's handwriting that I clipped when I did matte pieces. So this is basically signatures I cut up and they have handwriting from the celebrities. And I hate to throw the handwriting away just because I did a cut, so I keep them. And uh, here's just a little pile of what I have this show. This is Paul Tibbetts. He was the uh, guy that, um, pilot of the Enola Gay. I might have shown Paul Tips off already. I can't remember. But this one says low and slow, top rudder and the turns. So obviously he was writing this to some another pilot that knows what the hell that means. But uh, this is With My Best Wishes by Eddie Rickenbacker. Um, he was a fighting ace in World War I. And moving on to some non-war stuff. This is an inscription from Bill Walsh, the coach of the 49ers, to a loyal Niners fan. Thanks for your, thanks for the gift. Right there. All right. This one's cool. Um, actually got a new autograph to Matt of hers recently. This is Ruth Wakefield. And you're like, who the hell is Ruth Wakefield? Ruth Wakefield um, actually created the Toll House cookie. The, she's basically the creator of the chocolate chip cookie. Um, but she has this uh, with my very best wishes and hope that you will enjoy these recipes most cordially. So the inventor of the chocolate chip cookie right there. Very cool. Uh, this is a part of the, I've been pulling up apart some albums, some autograph albums. And uh, this is actually, this one isn't a part of that. This, never mind. This is not a part of that. This is Robert Ripley. Uh, Robert Ripley is the guy who created Ripley's Believe It or Not. And you'll probably recognize his handwriting when I show you because they still use his handwriting style in a lot of promos. 
So this is to Carl Lethart, a prize winner. So right there. And the signature actually hasn't been matted yet. So it's going to be a cool piece when it's done. And that's the year right there written by him, 1929. This is actually pulled from a book. So, all right. Three more, guys. This is the date, December 10th, 1992, written by Carl Sagan. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> These guys are looking at me like, nobody cares about your damn handwriting. <laughs> Pardon my French. Um, next we have Fred Rogers. And our, an appropriate word for Fred Rogers, I would say, is with kindness. With kindness from Fred Rogers. And the last one is a rare piece because he died young. Um, I have no idea what it says. It's really hard to read. He might have been high when he wrote it. I don't know. But Rob Ford, uh, <laughs> with some inscription about the cafeteria or something up there in the corner. I tried to make it out before the show, but it just, it's a little bit scribbly. It's so. in French, too. So. And maybe, and maybe have some French in there. You know, it is in Canada, so... Um, so that, that's what I got. And, uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and move on to market watch, Mikey. All right, guys, market report this week is going to focus on weird stuff. Um, it's a topic of conversation as far as autograph collecting goes this week. And, uh, when most people think about autographs, you think about photos, I don't, there's a lot of stuff that is not photographs that is autographed. Um, case in point, you're looking at a red stapler. And some of these things you have to explain to people why you have an autographed red stapler. If you've ever seen the movie Office Space, uh, this is Stephen Root who played Milton. Of course, it's a great movie. It's a great character. Uh, it fits in with the movie perfectly, but People have gotten the red stapler. There you go. Sign. <laughs> oh. I Is got mine. Yep, right in there. Well, there you go, Andy. So you got a hundred bucks in your hand right now. I was the originator of the red stapler going out to people. You just showed it again now. There you yeah. go. So yeah. personalized the top and signed it there. Oh, well, that and inscription can come off too on the top. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a great here. TTM signer, but I think he's yeah. doing it because he of this reason right here. They're charging 150 bucks for a red stapler that he signed. But uh, anywho, just uh, just as a side note, you know how much a goddamn red stapler costs because you can't find them anywhere. They uh, actually uh, swing line too, which is the brand that he talks about. I think these go for like 20 bucks. Okay, that's, that's reasonable. But shipping for a stapler, charges. yeah, like, shipping this charges. is like a baseball, <laughs> yeah. You're going to find one. It's starting to get a little tricky. All right. So just, again, weird stuff. You know, people are looking for upwards of 100 bucks for Stephen Root. These are obviously certified. Uh, next one, just a weird random thing that I found. There's a deck of playing cards signed by David Blaine, the magician. You know, it fits in with who he is and what his stuff does. But if you have this... To a non-collector, you kind of have to explain why you have a deck of cards signed it's by the yeah. So, just weird, random stuff. And uh, if you have horror. a deck of cards signed by like random people, then you really have to explain. Like oh, we're on talk about hit the deck. We did yeah, project we'll, hit the deck back in the day. We'll, we'll get to that one. <laughs> um, horror is a big genre for getting weird things signed. Um, a lot of props, a lot of knives, uh, a lot of a lot of stuff that is associated with movies. So uh, here's Nick Castle played the shape, uh, Mike Myers in the Halloween. Um, you know, you're looking at a hundred bucks. That's those are real knives. Those are not fake. So that Just, is actually lower than I thought it would be for that stuff. He's and I think the market is flooded because. You know, it's it's not as unique as it used to be. Yeah, yeah. totally. I, I see a lot of these like subscription services go in the route of some of this stuff. Have you noticed that? Like they're doing more gimmicky uh, object mm -hmm. autographs. Yeah, yes. You know, it's people don't want a picture signed at a con. They want something they think is unique, and now everyone does it. Masks and stuff. Yeah, like that. show. Uh, I've, the two I've big been ones. to 
Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. The two big ones was uh, Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger were dr- doing like the big uh, Rambo knives and Commando knives. I've been to a few conventions where people have uh, brought like uh, Star Trek Klingon swords or something. I don't know. I'm not sure what they are, but to be signed and they have like, okay, put them over here on this table. The person will come over there to sign them <laughs> and then come back to their table because they don't want you bringing up the swords or whatever. To <laughs> yeah, them. I, I thought about that. That's got to be awkward to bring a knife up to somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like you almost have to be like, I want this signed. <laughs> like <laughs> sign this, sign this. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah cause I peers, I peers I, out there murking people. Just to... <laughs> well, I felt cause I, I can, was a hotter holder. Yeah. That played Kane Hodder. Kane Hodder. yeah. I bought a machete for him to sign, but I couldn't send it TTM. <laughs> yep. So I just unscrewed the handle and sent the, the grip and it's not signed on the blade, but the grip yeah. and it just reattached it and it looks great. Cool. Nice. Well, I had the sheath right here, so uh, I have a John Water signed condom. So, oh, we're talking about weird items. Go ahead, Mike. All right, let's see what we got next. Uh, what now, random yeah. stuff we found? Uh, game used cleats. Our friend Garrett over at Slab City. We'll talk about him later. But he was—I called him Cletus for a long time because he got in game used stuff. To any autograph or non-autograph collector. These are just stinky shoes. Why would anyone collect these? I've got some in my closet I have no clue what to do with. <laughs> they don't display well. They stink. <laughs> They're game used. Uh, same thing with wrestling. Wrestling tights. Here are some ring-worn tights sign. Uh, this is Heath Slater. You can have some man pants signed by a wrestler. Yep. Yeah, I wish we had Stacy on tonight. <laughs> I wish have washed first. Yep, here we go. Speaking yeah. of Stacey Schaefer, oh. <laughs> you can have some underpants, some panties, some thongs signed by your favorite playmate. It doesn't, doesn't say, say they worn, though. Game you worn. Or <laughs> game worn. <laughs> uh, yeah. Our, funny how many of these our co-hosts of the show have. Right? Yeah, multiple co-hosts, too. <laughs> it's not just one. Um, I know Dave was big into uh, getting stuff. Uh, Dave Stotler. Dave, no. Blood, blood spawn. That, that was his thing. Um, next one, I pulled this one up because I couldn't find the old listing. But this is a uh, Paula Kramer, the golfer, a signed pink panther stuffed animal. Oh, I was they, waiting for that. I'm so uh, this is uh, actually a Norman Bridwell signed Clifford doll. This this is why I pulled it up exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Who, it's, uh, who would it's, get a stuffed animal signed, dude? And it's hard because you have to figure out where they're gonna sign it, right? So yeah, I just tell, took a ra- like an electric did. razor and I shaved his belly, mm-hmm. and he signed it right there on his <laughs> belly. So rest in peace, Norman. Thanks for the signed Clifford doll. And he's officially nuded too. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> why he's got the shaved belly. Just needs the cone of shame now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So ran- random things like stuffed animals. Uh, what we got next when i st- think of steven seagal the first thing that pops in my head is a chef's hat no <laughs> but somebody got it signed because he was in the movie under siege which he played the cook yeah. on the ship but random chef hat signed by steven seagal that's funny and last one we talked about this who in their right mind would get playing cards signed by random people Yep. why would you do that yeah so a lot of people don't um well I, if you've been in the community for a while you probably did know about this we had a project called hit the deck um i think we originated it on the old podcast Auto- autograph weekly and um it's spread uh, a lot of people like the idea you have basically cheap things to send out and it, it kind of involves you being creative um basically you have to Use the number or the suit, like, you know, hearts or clubs. You have to use those to link them with the celebrity. And then you have to explain to the celebrity what the hell's going on in the letter and hope they sign it. So um, a lot of people have used these as competition. I know Troy has used it as a competition uh, over the last few years. And uh, they're actually becoming quite, I see them a lot now. Like people are legit just sending out playing cards because it's a cheap way to get stuff signed. Yeah. 
And I was just joking, like why people would do it. Yeah. I, they do I brought do that it. up. Yeah, because <laughs> the hit deck. But I I follow somebody on Twitter. Uh, I think it's Pokey the Brave. He's been doing it for a long time. He's got some cool stuff. His is his is more random. Um, you, I know you guys when you didn't hit the deck tried to associate it with the thing, but um, yeah, people just send them out. Hmm. So autographs is not always you know photos and baseballs that's it's random stuff so. and sometimes that makes it harder to explain yeah exactly. uh, pull up a random thing that i just yanked from over there jaws's first victim it's a little yes. mini shark signed by susan whatever was it beck uh the stunt back, woman back in line yeah back in shine that's cool i wanted to send these to all the victims but i kind of put it aside another thing i started but never finished signed pop by uh, matthew modine Oh, but well, those are, those are pretty popular. Like those are popular. legit. Like that's like one of the numbers, one, number one signed yeah. items. Now I thought, I figured pops would have faded by now. So they, they're actually showing a little bit of staying power. They're not um, being your babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I, I think eventually it'll go that way, but it's, right. it's lasting longer than uh, being your babies. I just sent out my first one the other day, actually. Just I had the a box or the full thing? The whole, the whole entire the whole thing. thing. Actually, no, I lied. That's my second one I sent out. I didn't get my first one back, but oh. I took it out, collapsed yeah. the box down, made it flip. Yeah, you might do that next time, Andy. Just collapse the box down. Now too lazy. Too, way, <laughs> too way lazy. too lazy. You save money, dude. No, you know what it is? That's how lazy I am. I'd rather spend like four <laughs> extra bucks each way to keep the whole goddamn box. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, we're going to move on to the Via Venue report uh, with Chase. Chase, uh, tell us who we can send Pops to to get signed. Um, <laughs> Roger Staubach. That's a good one to send a pop to. Does he have a pop? Yes, there's a. I don't know. Who doesn't have a pop? I probably have a pop out there now. Hmm. We might need to see about making a, a show pop. <laughs> All right. Um. Again, I've said this before. Baseball private signings on Facebook. There's almost daily someone new being put on there. Check it out, especially if you're a set collector. You know, trying to find some because there's some obscure signers that don't sign like TTM or don't do a lot of in-person signings that are now signing, especially with everything going on. I guess they're uh, hurting for a little bit of money. So they're doing some, some signings. So you can check that out, but I'm um, going to go over a small list of non sports today um, that I saw. You can same thing. You can go to uh, celebrity private signings. It's a group on Facebook. Um, Tim Curry, Chadwick Bosman, Danny Elfman, uh, Helena Bonham Carter, Michael Keaton, Christopher Lambert. Those are a few that are Dang. I saw pop up in the last week or Those so. Some big names, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> now some of the bigger names do come bigger prices, but it's also you know you're getting an authentic you know autograph. And some it comes them, with certification, right? Most of them. Yeah, it's I've seen a lot of them actually doing like. Um, like video, like they'll record the signing and then whoever had like bought in or sent in will get a copy of it or um, a Zoom link, like, you know, seeing somebody doing some Zoom signings as well. And um, some of them actually just Facebook live too. So yeah, um, definitely check those out. There's, yeah. there's ways to get, it's not, it's in person, but it's not you being in person. Signature, yeah, so. especially if you guys got pieces you got to finish. You know, you got that one guy that's kind of never does stuff. And there's people doing some stuff right now that uh, they usually aren't. So it's worth looking into to see if your guy is signing. Yeah, here's um, one that I'm going to be sending out soon here. It's a uh, sax man. Just need to get Steve Sax, and he's doing a private signing coming up in end of June. Um, that's awesome. So, yeah, definitely check that stuff out, guys, because it's a prime time for private signings. Uh, let's move on to our topic, which we touched on a little bit in market watch explaining what the heck you do. Um, since this is kind of a little laid back episode with just the co-hosts, no guest host uh, on this episode, I thought it'd be nice to kind of talk about some of the interactions we have with our loved ones, people we encounter um, when it comes to collecting and how we explain it and some of the reactions we get. So uh, first, we're going to talk about the reactions. And I think this gets kind of put into two boats. 
um, with some in the middle maybe, but you either have the people that react in a way of, uh, hmm, okay, like they don't understand why you do what you do. Then you have the people that understand and could possibly be even interested in a follow-up question or two and, and, uh, and ask you some stuff. So I find they've kind of fallen those two categories. Um, what have you guys experienced with uh, reactions when you tell people that you're an autograph collector? As far as my loved one, I'm, I'm very lucky that I have a very supportive wife of my hobby. She's interested to see who I get back because, you know, I try and incorporate some of who I send to the people we see because I will be watching a movie. I'll be like, Oh, I wonder if they sign. And if I get that person back, I'm like, Ooh, look. And um, of course, one of our favorite movies is miracle. So when I was getting the, the hockey team back, she was like, oh. she gets excited and, you know, and she enjoys that aspect as far as like the process of the hobby she she didn't care less, right. <laughs> but the end result, she likes seeing who, who I get in. So for the surprise. Um, yeah, I, I, I can see that. I might see since I'm a dealer, my wife, my wife's more about the money. <laughs> so like, I'll show her something really cool. I'll be like, check this out. This is like from a guy that did this amazing thing. He was like the only one and he died in 1968. And she's like, Oh, okay. I'm like, it's worth cost? $500. It's like, holy <laughs> crap, that's great. You know, like, <laughs> it's all about the money there in my experience with the with the, the spouse. So she understands that autographs, you know, are mon they carry monetary value. And uh, that monetary value helps our family. So that's uh, kind of where that goes in my family. Uh, how about you guys? You guys got an experience in that? You want to go first? <laughs> uh, yeah. uh oh, are you guys going to get in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, mine is, um, I mean, since we're in May, I mean, that's when I started TTM in 1991, May of 91. So I was doing this well before I even met my wife and I've been with my wife 20 years, 21 years total. But she's, I mean, from day one, I've known her. I mean, she knew I did this and, you know, she's always been supportive. She's, you know, the only time it's funny is, you know, she's having a rough day and I get a stack of envelopes in the mail because she goes, gets them, goes, ah, a little f extra free time on your hands, huh? You know, why, why aren't you doing stuff around the house? <laughs> so that's the only time I, it, yeah, it's the only time I ever get that little rubbing. But otherwise, I mean, like when I got that Goldberg, kid from the Goldberg, because we watch it all the time. I'm like, oh, look what I got. She's like, oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. Okay, go empty the dishwasher. But, yeah. <laughs> no, so, but relatable, so those relatable autographs are, are big gets. Yeah. Gets. yeah. I mean, otherwise I wouldn't show her any of them because right. I just, I don't think she would really care. I mean, she's very supportive. She's like, oh, you know, but I tell her, this is my relaxed time. This is how I, you know, deal with my stress or your head. I take it out on you. But, you know, <laughs> this way I can relax and yep. hide down here. And the only other complaint I ever get is, hey, why don't you ever clean up behind you? Cause it's a goddamn mess. Cause it's a display. I'm, that's it's a display of your work. It's oh no, I mean you should see below, like all the stuff <laughs> down oh, here. Andy, it's, we can't show below. <laughs> not down <laughs> there, over there. <laughs> don't don't pull the curtain behind. <laughs> but uh, I, mean, I mean, if I used to get a lot of hockey in, my kids were all hockey guys. So they're like, oh, who did you get? But it's all guys that played in the eighties and nineties, right. so they have no clue. But if I get it like a fresh guy that's still playing, they're like, oh yeah, I know. And my oldest is a stats freak so he'll go on the whole ring of you know oh he was good but he sucked this year but he was good these years so but yeah other than that i mean um you know people that come to my house i mean like i have a hallway of just going down my basement steps and just sign stuff like the balls and bats and stuff so we have people over like oh what's all this and it strikes up a conversation a little bit now that's a hard balance to strike because with people that are coming to your house that are maybe acquaintances that you're not best friends with you have to pick that amount of information to give them about your collection <laughs> because you being an obsessive can literally sit there and talk for five hours about what you have, but you have to judge what that person yep. wants to hear. And it's hard. It's hard sometimes because like you find yourself blathering on about something and you see that glazed look on their face. Yeah. Um, my wife has to step in sometimes with me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to something else. <laughs> <laughs> nah, not me. Like I, I know what my limit. Is. Like we're not watching like a, 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 a football game. I'm like, oh yeah, that guy signs. No, I don't do that. It's just, 
you know, in my mind, I'm like, oh yeah, he does. Do I have any of, you know, but I, I kind of keep it separate. You know, you're sitting there it's watching just, a movie with your wife and with a little notepad of writing down people to, hey, I need to look up this person. Hey, I need to see if they sign. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's almost like I live a double life though. Cause like, I don't talk about autograph collecting with non-collectors. Like, right. They have zero interest in it. And if, if they, you know, if you talk about it, they're like, don't kids do that? You know, chase autographs. And right. so I don't even bother. All my interaction is online doing so YouTube. So you never had a positive interaction with somebody that was outside of the sphere. Like, yeah. where I, like I they're like, oh, that. what I, you got? Like, like, where they act interested. Yeah. I mean, we used to have stuff displayed on the walls and people would come in and be like, oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But, you right. know, for the most part, like if I'm at the hockey rink, I'm not talking autographs with hockey parents. Right. It's, it's just not a topic of conversation that ever comes up. Right. Like, oh, hey, there's, you know, the Tampa Bay Lightning guys. I'm going to go over and get his autograph. You know, that wouldn't be something. I think it can, come, it can almost come off as braggadocious in a crowd of uh, people that aren't educated. So, like, you're sitting there and be like, oh, yeah, that guy signs for free. I get him all the time. You know, I'm the autograph man. Like, it can, it can, I can see it coming off that way. Um, you know well, I think most adults are like, why, why would you want that? See, I get both. See, so I'm in that middle ground. Like I, I know people that are younger than me. I know people older and I can see that kind of split where the older crowds definitely like, why are you doing something for kids? Like that's, that's weird. But then the people younger than me that grew up with comic cons and stuff, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, they have a different point of view. Like they're definitely uh, more, uh, more accepting. I think when people see price tags, they're like, really? Because like we can, we go to Disney and it's funny because some, they have some of the star Wars autographs and you walk into Disney and you know, somebody you can get for a hundred bucks at a con, they have it for $900. Right. But like people that don't know that go in and say, that's so cool. And you're, you know, if you're standing next to me, be like, yeah, I got that. Like really? <laughs> I'll sell so, it to you for five hundred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the uh, I mean, not understanding the market's a big part of it, right? Because like, there are going to be people that think autographs are worthless. You know, they're they're going to think the big names are worth a lot of money, but anything other than that's not worth anything. Um, so those people are going to poo-poo your hobby. And then there's people that don't understand it, but are kind of interested in it, but don't do enough research to understand the, the way it works. So then they think everything's worth gold. And yeah. those are the people that jump into the hobby because they're like, I'm going to make every, I'm going to make so much money doing this and uh, are sorely disappointed in the end. Yeah, um, so you tell somebody about it and they're like, Oh, well, who you got? And you say somebody and they're like, who is that? You know, and they're, they're expecting the big top a listers, you know, all the time, but. And those you people don't even bring the most money. Right. And like Then you got the people like on Facebook for or a Facebook marketplace that pull an autograph out of a, you know, a random pack. That's, that's a nobody, but they post it on there, you know, $500 because yeah. it's an autograph. They just yeah. have no idea. No idea. <laughs> and those people like, and that swings both ways. A person posts on their box of uh, aut cards with some autographs. And uh, they got some big names in there and they're just like 50 bucks. I want to get rid of it. So, you know, it goes both ways. Those people overpriced, people are underpriced. Uh, they just don't understand the dynamics of the market, which it does take time. It, you can't just learn that on a whim. You have to learn uh, how the market swings, where it is right now. Some people may be going off the market was in the eighties. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a cluster. Um, so yeah, you're going to get people of all types reacting in different ways um and how do you deal with that so um explanations how do we explain what we do in a way that garners the best reaction um <clears throat> uh, I, I do want to talk about post office people real fast before we move on to this have you do your does your post office guy know what you do go everybody <laughs> um what there was one guy i dealt with all the time he would read like every envelope and he's like who's this Who's this one? Who's this? Oh, I know this guy. I know, but he's since retired and the guys that took over his spot, they don't, they don't ask any questions. I don't right. know if they're allowed to even ask any questions like what, but it just, I, the guys that I deal with now, no, cause there was a big time where I used to put up the big, um, the 
the big envelopes and they would grab it and bend it to feel what was in it. Yep. And they've learned, I'm like, can you not just grab and squeeze? I mean, yep. they already know now not to do that. So that that's the conundrum, right? So you have, <laughs> I, I think the autograph community is a little paranoid, but I've had mail theft within the last two years, like 15 packages stolen. And informed delivery. <laughs> right. Informed. Oh yeah. I started it after that. Um, but um, it's, it's the age old question. Do you tell your, your mail guy? Because do you trust your mail guy to not slide some stuff under the table uh, when he sees it's from somebody good or, or just taking a chance to, you know, you never know. Or do you tell him and that way they take care of your packages uh, in a more appropriate way. Um, are you talking I, I, more I, I, of the guy at the post office or the guy delivering it? Yeah. Uh, I go to the post office to pick up my stuff. So it's the same guy for me. Yeah. But uh, you definitely like, if you're in that situation, like, uh, it'd be the one delivering the, the mail. So do all of you on your return envelopes, write Who it's coming from? Mm. I think a lot of people initial, don't they? No, nobody. I used to. I, think I, put my, I write. My I write mine in both places, yep. both yeah. spots. Yeah, that's the. So just in case something happens to one part of the address. You're yeah, my there. the guy who delivers to my house asked me once. You send a lot of stuff to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> then that that's when I started to kind of have a conversation, and then because I get the big, like you were saying, Andy, the big eight by ten or nine by twelve envelopes for the you know putting eight by tens in it. Told them, you know, hey, if you see these. You know, don't bend them if if you know if it's if the the mailbox is full, just bring them, set them on the porch, or you know, bring them up to the house or something. And and then the next week you get one of those. Oh, we're sorry, and you get your package that's been ripped open. Well, and the no, 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 taken no. Out. See, you know, it's been like oopsie. If if I'm if I'm at the house and I see he's coming up, you know, I come. Oh, here's a bottle of water. You know, have a good day. You know, yeah, be treat nice your, to mail your mailman. Good. Yep, treat nice to yeah, your the, the moral of the story is at the or end of the year, woman. give give him a nice tip. Yeah, you gift know. cards are good. Uh, I do lottery tickets a lot. Um, keep that guy happy because they handle your mail. That and if you do a lot of inventory, thing in. <laughs> yeah. And if you do a lot of inventory like I do, like let's say they drop 10, 15 packages a year, you know, that could be 100, 200 bucks, you know, on just damages that happen just due to their, you know, throwing stuff around. So, you can save money by paying money, you know, uh, get them a little gift at the end of the year. keeps everybody happy and don't be a douche. You know, that, that, that's obvious. Um, anyways, so explaining what you do, um, how do you guys go about that? Do you say, I'm just, an, do you keep it simple? I collect autographs or I am invested in the autograph hobby. Do you try to make it sound like more professional? I, I, I just say that I've done it. It's, it's a hobby I've done since I was a kid and I keep doing it, you know, because most people are like, Oh, that's pretty cool. And you know, that's, that's the extent of it. Some people will be like, how, how do you get all these? You know, then you right. go into a little more in depth, but I just, I just explain it's a hobby. That's my release. Gotcha. Now that I got kids and I'm bringing my kids and saying, Hey, we do it as a family. You know, we go, we, we write out as I showed you know, the NASA photos, my son writes them, uh, Letters out as well. We go to games. You know, we do it as a family. It's a good one. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's um, – how do I phrase this? It's – I'll bring up stuff to get metered, you know, at the counter a lot of times. If the envelope is like a person's not like a known name that no one really would know it. If I'm sending a package like I was doing the Kareem du Ju Kareem the Ju Jabbar, I went and meted – we have a self kiosk. So I went and did that myself. Because I just didn't want the questions. I don't yeah. want them. Or I'll switch to a different post office. Because when you go to media, your video games, <laughs> yeah, like I'll go to a different one. Like I did that Alex Trebek one, and the guy's looking at me like, "Oh, is that the guy from Jeopardy?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's a We're video friends. game. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a video game." But you know, like I said, if it's well known name, I'll do it myself. If it's no one and no questions are gonna gonna come up and ask me a hundred questions, I just, yeah, can you just do it? Or again, or I'll put over postage on it and just throw it in my, you know, the mail slot someplace. Andy, are you, are you going to the post office to get postage? Yes and no. Okay, Andy. Pirateship.com. That's all you need to know. Pirateship.com. Pirateship.com. Pirateship. You get business rates on shipping and you can print out the label at home and just drop it off. 
Oh, that sounds like a lot of work. Print that home. <laughs> it's actually less work. You don't have to go to the post office and sit in the line. But uh, just a recommendation. Hey, what are you uh, talking about? Hey, I like standing in line with 30 people all wearing gloves, masks, coughing on each other. Yeah. And like really just, you know, spraying their disease yeah. all over me. I, I love it. I won't do that today. Um, we, my post office is tiny and then we have like six people in a tiny space I'm, and none of them were wearing masks because this is we're not going to get into that stuff we're going to talk about how I deal with explaining autograph collecting I say I'm a memorabilia dealer because I also do fabric fobs which is memorabilia and it sounds professional and once you throw the word autograph in there uh, it does add an air of uh, amateurism that you don't like to feel from some people. So um, I definitely go with memorabilia dealer. If they ask more questions, I say I, I specialize in signed books and worn memorabilia. And that's usually where the conversation stops. Sometimes they ask past that, but uh, I try to give appropriate answers that are fancy words for autograph collecting and cutting up clothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's the way I go about it. Uh, let's move on to our third subtopic, which is, has this changed over time? Um, so we've been around for a while. We've kind of seen how attitudes toward uh, collecting in general have changed. Comic-Con, I think, is probably the biggest change in that, um, creating almost a whole nother business for people after what they're famous for. Uh, they have a revenue to, to rely on after the retirement. So, um, do you, th you guys think that has changed people's attitudes on, on collecting? Do you think there, it's less, like, like you said, you, they, they said that's for kids, like less demeaning now that it's more acceptable in our culture to go to a Comic-Con and ask for an autograph? I, I think it's become more of a business instead of a hobby. So, I think it's more accepted now by a wider range of people because, you know, there's a lot more companies that do like subscription boxes and stuff like that. Um, authentication companies, it's not just you go get a napkin signed and displayed on, you know, your wall. Now it's, I have this authenticated piece and it's in this, you know, $500 display that I had right. custom made. So I, right. I, I think in that aspect, it has, has grown and broadened you know, who is more accepting because of the business aspect of it. And what, like these shows like Pawn Stars, um, they talk about value a lot and uh, maybe that, that those values that people see, maybe that makes it more acceptable also. Uh, what do you guys think, Andy, Chase? Go ahead, Chase. I'm still thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's definitely more accepted in the younger crowd. Once you get about that 40 to 50 year range, then that's when you start to get to that, you know, the questions and the looks. Of, what? You know, like, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's stuck in their own old old school ways, uh, kind of thinking the way I grew up as a kid is the right way and every other way is wrong. Uh, that, as you get older, that tends to get ingrained in you. Um, yeah. When, whenever I go to, like, baseball games and, you know, go down, get autographs at the line and stuff, it's usually the older guys that are like, let the kids through, get, let the kids through. And, right. You know, yeah, totally. I'm um, still a kid inside, you know. <laughs> so, there's a, <laughs> so there's a generational gap there, but the younger generation has definitely accepted it um, a lot more than it used to be. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Andy, you got anything? No, I, I, I'm really kind of blank right now. Really? Like, that is like, you, so you're <laughs> older. You have any older friends that like react differently uh, than maybe no, some like, of your younger friends or younger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I hang out with younger people. Well, even uh, younger, no, quite, younger no, quite, no, um, maybe your kids, kids, parent, like no, kids it, parents. Or I have a, I have a, oh, I have a buddy from you know home. He's he buys a lot of stuff. Like he doesn't send off, but he buys like a lot of eBay stuff or like private signings. Stuff like that. Like, he'll go nuts. You know, he'll see it. Like, he got into a huge kick. He was buying all a couple of Whitey Bulger signed prison letters. You know? Yeah. Stuff like that. That's what he grabs. And that's what we'll, that's the only thing we'll talk about. And that's investment stuff. You could almost say right. it's just investment. Like, you're putting your money somewhere you that you know it's going to grow and, and probably never, ever 
go down in value. No, he's more of display. He has a whole room of just signed stuff that is, you know, it's high end stuff. He doesn't yeah. do like the low common guy. Like he'll grab a Brady football, no problem. And just display it for his own like little man town there. Right. You know, his conversation pieces with, you know, when he has people over. Right. So like those, those are the guys, those are the high end guys that, uh, there's different eBayers guys. There's eBayers that cater to the collectors on the lower end stuff. There's eBayers that cater to the high end guys that whenever I'm not saying this guy, that your friend is one of these guys, but there are people that are wealthier that will go on eBay and say, what's the highest price autograph of this person? Cause I know that one's authentic and that, that, and that aspect messes with the community because along with that goes, the cheapest autograph on here is definitely fake. So you have those two things fighting against each other and, and you as a seller have to find that middle ground. So um, it's very interesting. Yeah. It, um, there is definitely a generational gap there, but um, I think it's, I think gradually we're making headway. You know, who has it worse than us though? Trading card people. They got it worse than us. I think uh, so. Don't you? Did you just see what the Mike Trout autograph card went It don't to? matter. We're talking the about the day? people that are – I know, I know. It was like 4,000 – what was it? Uh, 900,000. 900, wow. That's crazy. Like, seriously? Like, it's – Well, there's a lot of money being thrown in that direction, but I'm saying the people that don't understand it are going to – like, they're going to criticize that all day long mm. because it's baseball cards. You know, it's like, in their mind, it's cardboard. It's cardboard. Yeah. Man, with like, the picture that, on it. I think they got it worse than us. Because at least we have, like, you could do documents, sign documents. You could do, autographs have been around since, like, the 30s, uh, where people got celebrities and autograph albums. Um, it was mostly little girls getting it done. <laughs> <laughs> and we're but all it was there. there Nobody was really collecting <laughs> cards back then. They were just extras that were thrown in tobacco products, you know. Um, so I think the card guys have it harder than us, but we still, you know, we have to be creative when we're discussing that. Let's move on to the last one, which is celebrity reactions. So, uh, we've done a, uh, I've done a few celebrity interviews and these guys have conversed a few times with celebrities. Do you guys bring up the cherry collector or do you just talk about, I'm a big fan. Which way do you guys go? I go both. I'm, yeah, I'm a, I do both. <laughs> yeah, I sign it. I'm a, I'm a big fan, but I also say, basically letting them know that anything they're sending me is going into my collection. Right. Right. And I actually do have a typed form letter that I was using for a little, you know, when I went through that little phase that I didn't want to write anymore, which saying I was a collector and I was working on a couple sets that I'm trying to complete. And then I did my little kissy kiss pot. And then at the end saying, Hey, can you sign it? It's, definitely going to go i don't sign i don't sell i don't trade and or give away any of my autographs and the exactly where they're going to go right into my own collection right by the way you I, can I, buy all of andy's autographs on ebay <laughs> no. yeah, you say, I, I, i've changed a little bit um with autographs for a career i i tell them i'm a collector first but you know i i'm sending you like three items and i'm going to sell two of them but Right. You know, a portion of the proceeds will go to a charitable cause. So. Right. Yeah. So it's 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 one of those things. Do you guys maybe feel out the celebrity before you make the decision, or do you just straight up everybody gets told both? Is that how you guys roll? Right. I, I'm a form yeah. letter all the way, yeah. so, so everyone everybody gets the same, same thing. <laughs> See, I, you chase. I, oh, good. Same. Go yeah, I, 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 I'm a form letter just like the other guys. I, I mean. There are a few, a few different people that I, I do change it up a bit for depending on you know, what they're doing and, you know what their genre and things like that. But what about IPing? They, You've done a ton of IPing, Chase. IPing is more what well, I'd be interested in, like in person talking to somebody. Do you tell them that you're a collector or because that's you know straight up they can respond to you right there. It's different. Really, I mean, really, they, they don't ever ask. I mean, like, if, if you're going to a game, they're walking from the dugout or from the from the clubhouse to the dugout. You stick it out there, you know, you ask them to come sign, they'll come stick sign. Or they won't, whatever <laughs> okay. you want to get signed, you know. <laughs> okay. okay. So, I mean, that's, you know, they, they sign it. If they're going to sign, they don't. They, they don't. 
Well, if you're at a game and doing that, then I think they pretty much assume that you're a collector because uh, older older people that are getting signatures at games are almost always collectors or dealers. Fall in one of those categories. <laughs> it, yeah, they can pretty much, uh, I think, tell who the dealers are just by the quantity they're getting signed at one time or True. holding out there. That's uh, I've seen a lot of, of collectors though get pretty greedy. Oh no no no! Don't don't get me wrong. I I use I think I showed it off at one of the on the other shows a little spiral book that you know I I put out like I have three set up for them to sign at a time. Right. But you turn the page, I got two or three pages of their cards. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, uh, they're depending on who it is and how they're signing. I might be at the end over here, get it signed, get my three, and I'll run over by the, the dugout, flip uh-huh. the page. You know, if I'm put fast, on, put on put on one of those disguises with the nose and the glasses. <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that. You know, just switch a hat or you know whatever. <laughs> That mustache is fake, anyways. We all know. No, no, no. It's, it's, just, it's, my name is Mason it's, it's, Dink. It's real. I think a lot of the celebrities and sports guys know they can really decipher between the difference. I mean, if you see the same guy three, you know, it's a three game series. You see him three days in a row with the same amount of cards, or the, he's throwing this five of the same card in front of you. Right. Or if you're like a celebrity in town and you see the same guy four or five days in a row with a different stack of pitches, then you definitely can tell from there. And like who's going to be selling them, who's the dealer. And well, let's, let's put this on neutral ground then. Okay. So let's say you have a comic con that's relaxed rules, which I know are rare. So relaxed rules where you can sit there and kind of talk to the celebrity without a time limit, no rush, rush. Um, you're having just a little discussion back and forth. I, I had this with Henry Winkler. It's kind of cool. Um, do you tell them you're a dealer? Like, are you afraid of the reaction you're going to get uh, if you say you're a dealer? Because you don't know what's in their head about dealers or a collector. Um, mainly collector, I guess. My, my case would be dealer, but for you guys, it would be collector. Do you mention that? Or do you just leave it out of the conversation on purpose not to stir the pot? I think at a con, they're getting paid, so I don't, I don't think they care what is coming out of your mouth. They're just like, uh huh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, right. yeah, there you go, bye bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're just trying to get you through to the next person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but That's I don't true. think, I don't think that would be the like a topic. Hey, I just bought this for forty. I'm gonna go around the corner tonight and sell it for seventy five. Like, I don't think that would be even a subject to even bring up. What's the point? There, well, there have been some wrestlers at at the airports they've asked, you know, what are you going to get for this? Sure. Uh, then they sign it. They're like, you know, I'm, I'm going to get 60 bucks for it. Right. And some of them are like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> A little surprised at the price. Thought it'd be more. Thought it'd be less. But. <laughs> if, uh, if you want bring in 10 bucks today. <laughs> oh, really? Because <laughs> they show a lot of the signings on YouTube. And like I saw one the other day it was Tom Hanks. And he's like, oh, what's this going for these days? Right. And it was, you know, one guy was like, oh, it's 125. And he's like, wow, I'm, I'm moving up the chain. <laughs> so like, a, majority, a majority of people understand, a majority of celebrities understand that part, that, that there's going to be people out there massively collecting their stuff, obviously, but also dealing their stuff. And they're not offended by it as much, int- uh, maybe intrigued by it. I, I think in this day and age, they'd probably be more surprised if, and maybe even question if you're like, I'm a collector. I'm, you know, will you sign this? They're like, bullshit. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're going to, it's going to show up on eBay and some of them don't care. But I, right. I think at that point, you know, people are more surprised if you say I'm a collector. What, what, what percentage do you, like of celebrities do you think are actual like collectors themselves and would sympathize with somebody that's a collector and maybe even strike up a discussion about, I, I know Pat Nishak is like the most famous right? 1%. He's the guy. Yeah. <laughs> send me a signed card of somebody else and I'll sign your card or I'll send you a signed card of myself. That, that was his deal. Right. Um, yeah. So I, I don't think there's a lot of those guys in, in, in the league. Like if you're an athlete and you get to the professional level, your life is taken over by the sport. And most likely some of these people collected when they were kids, but once they started becoming like serious about sports, I would say that stuff dropped by the wayside. Yeah, not necessarily. The big thing in sports these days is the jersey swap at the end. 
you know, these guys are meeting up at half, half court basketball or football, taking off their jersey, showing it with whoever they're training with and tra- training jerseys. Um, That's an easy way to do it, though. Like, yeah, they don't they, have to actually put time into it. No, it's no, just, no. Nobody puts in time. But there are, they, they collect stuff, you know, because they're athletes, they have access to it. Uh, David Wells, the former Boston uh, yeah. pitcher, showed his man cave. And he's got a whole collection of other people's jerseys and stuff that he collected. And so I think they are collectors. They just don't go about it how we do. Right. They have direct yeah. access. They don't have to spend right. the time that we do. Well, well I think all... it's – yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Andy. And they're millionaires, I... so they can buy stuff. Well, I was thinking it's more that sports guys are more collectors than, like, movie celebrities. They're not walking up saying, hey, um, I was in a movie with Tom Hanks. I want your, your jacket that you just wore. Uh, he might, they might get a signed picture or an item, but a sports guy is a lot easier. Right. I mean, I, I saw I that David the... Wells – man cave that i mean it was insane the crap that he had in there yeah. and i think like you movie, said it's... movie stars i think they're more like prop related they're like yeah. i worked on this movie like um helmsworth lee and helmsworth he's like i took thor's hammer <laughs> right you know? that's one of the most common questions on, on late night tv right is what props have you stolen like i see i've seen that question a million times yeah on every one of my q and a's i i ask you on there you know, what do you collect? Like this one's Bobby Witt and this is baseballs and bats. I've got one back from um, Lily Sobieski. I think that's how you pronounce her name. And she collects hair from people that she has acted with. Yeah, that's I a thing. They, it's a very yeah. niche, but yeah. it's a thing. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, they, celebrities do collect things too. I mean, I get some of them, you know, say nothing or, but, or don't put, leave it, you know, leave it blank, but, you know, I get answers from a lot of them, and you know, they they do. Some of them do collect as well. She probably wants some of that mustache here, Chase. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So celebrities are kind of like us, but they just collect in different ways. I think we can come to that conclusion. Um, some aren't going to understand it at all. Some will, but uh, none of them probably collect exactly like we do. Maybe Pat Neshack. He's the only one ever. <laughs> Who, uh, speaking of Pat, it's funny that he has access to basically everyone in the major league when he was playing, and he still was having a tough time completing his sets because there was a few guys that refused to sign Zach, for him. Zach Greinke, Zach, Zach Greinke yeah. was number one. <laughs> I just have to buck up and buy it. You're a millionaire, so at that point, Oops, you know. well, try to find a Zach Greinke in any place. Good luck. Yeah, that's true. I guess. Um, wasn't it, wasn't it Pat that uh, that somebody got traded or something to the Cardinals with him and they wanted his number and he traded his number for a Babe Ruth autograph. That was, was I know there's somebody, I couldn't remember who it was, but I was thinking it might've been Pat. Um, it was a Babe Ruth ball. I forget who it was. It, I don't think it was him though. Okay. Was it well, Wells? If you guys think about it. It might've been Wells. Wells. It might have been Wells. Wells. I think it was Wells. Cause I know he has a couple of them, but I don't think it was Pat. But I did hear that story someplace. Better yeah. be PSA DNA authenticated. That's all I have to say. <laughs> um, let's move on to our favorite segment of the show, The Case Against. And this week, we're looking at Don Sutton, a man who signs TTM via charging. And this would be a huge scandal if we prove that it's signed by somebody other than Ms. Sut- Mr. Sutton. So... Uh, Mike, you want to present some evidence? Yeah, sure. Let me, uh, Don Cornelius Sutton. Actually, I don't know if that's his <laughs> middle name, but <laughs> that, was a, that was a soul train guy, Don Cornelius. Anyways, I digress. Uh, Don Sutton, here is a PSA DNA card. And when this was brought to our attention, Everyone was screaming about the S. Look at the S, look at the S, look at the S. So here you can see a nice big looping S. Don, kind of circle with almost a U for the N. Uh, The other thing, take notice here, Sutton, the first T, little big T, second one. All right. So that is certified by PSA DNA. Number two, 
this is a TGM Don Sutton. Circle, Don, double for the N. Different S. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Uh, no loop, but small T into the big T into the end, Sutton. So you're thinking, oh, there's a difference there. There's definitely a difference. What's going on here, there guys? There's a difference. Oh, maybe it's cards. Nope. Oh, here's a photo. But look at this. Uh, this is an old promo, and I want you guys to look at this autograph up here. This is Don Sutton signed. Uh, what they did, this is like the old 1980 cards where they had them sign. Yep. Uh, oh, but wait. Don Sutton. Triangle S. With a triangle S down there. But look. Small T, big T, into the end. Oh, wait. Loopy S. Small T, big T, into the end. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Right. Oh, wait, what is this? Cert. A certified card. But it's got the triangle S. What is going on here? All right. Uh, circle D into the O. Double N. It's hard to see because it's small. Triangle, but small T, big T into the N. This one's just a hot mess. <laughs> I don't even know what this is, but it's got the circle D, O, double into the N. Attempted circle S here, I don't know, but small T, big T into the N. Here's another TTM. Circle, double N. Loopy S, small T, big T, into the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what's going on I'm here? Getting weird here. But characteristics: circle D, into the O, double N. That one looks like it's signed by Don Button. <laughs> <laughs> Tempted, squiggly S. Small T, bigger T, into the N. Last one, certified. Circle, double, double N, loopy S, small, big T, into the N. Mm -hmm. So, in his early stuff, I think you see the classic, nice, clean, very loopy S. In his later stuff, I think he forgets how to sign his S. Yep. But all the other characteristics are the same. Uh, if you go through every signature, the loopy D, undon, O, double N. Uh, I tried to focus on the S because that's what everyone was screaming about but I focused on everything else. Can I focus on one other thing real fast? Um, yep. The O and on Don and Sutton, they're almost always crossed over through the O, um, almost looking like an E sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that's another characteristic to look for. And it is um, on almost every signature that I've seen. So that's a very Den, distinctive way to make an O. Den Sutton? Yeah. Yeah, it's, and it crosses over in different points, but it's either in the middle or lower yeah, to the end. Yeah, there's this little, almost little E here, and yeah. the way he comes across here. Very distinct. The but again, I everyone's screaming, the S's are the key. The S's are the key. I don't think the S's are the key. I think it's he's either rushed or sloppy, or he forgets how to sign his S's. Because yeah. everything else I saw characteristic wise from the double N, where it almost looks like a U, to the, the smaller T, bigger T, um, it's almost always in a signature where mm -hmm. you can see that gap. Even on this one, I know 
when people sign something like this for a facsimile autograph, they used to, you know, tell them to clean it up a little bit so they could read the autograph. Right. That well, is a lot a, of those, like, like on the tops, like I think 82 tops is a big one. I think it uh, was 80, I think as well. It come, those actually came, the signatures came from the contract from tops. Really? So that's on a piece of paper line. That's where they get those signatures. Mm -hmm. from. Yeah, I, I wouldn't is, say it's an autograph. It, you know, somebody signing. It's a signature, right? And and there's definitely a difference. But even even in this one that you can see um, that has the facsimile down here, um, the characteristics on the Sutton are still are still there. Um, but even though it's a completely different signature up there. Um, so that, that's the stuff I looked at. And when this was, like I said, when this was brought to us, everyone said the S is key. I don't think so. I think that was the farthest from the key. I think yep. every, every other letter is the key to the signature. Yep. Um, so that's, that's what I have. I will add that if you're saying that it's a secretarial TTM signature, you're also saying that whoever signed the secretarial signature also signed some certified cards because those, there are some certified cards with that signature on them. Um, so you're making and a bold claim. signing them for a long time. Yes. I think the card that I saw, um, I mean, they've ranged in dates. They kind of go back and forth on some certifieds when they were signed in different ways. Um, I, I think he's guilty. I think he's guilty of not going to class the day they learned how to make capital S's in cursive. That's what I think he's guilty of. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know why this happens, but you do see some signature variations on some people that are consistently inconsistent. So um, the, here, the whole my, signature. Will, here's the Don Sutton that I have here. Now this right. one, I believe would be a TTM. This is one that I picked up. Uh, I think in a trade with some other uh, collectors, but um, I think it was a TTM to be honest, but right. I don't know because I didn't get it. But I think with the, just like what Mike was saying, it, yes, there are some variations in the S's, but the rest of it is pretty standard. Right. And like with stuff that we claim is secretarial, like Debbie Reynolds, it's not just the tell that t shows you that the uh, signature is not real. There's other things in the signature that are consistent with that. You, as you see every time that the Reynolds curves a certain way. So every time that, that Reynolds curves a certain way, you see these other variations happen. Yeah, so it the, matches that's up. The first tell. So yeah, the S can yeah, be the it's first the, it's tell. It's the easiest tell. You can look at it and then look at the rest of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, Chase froze up. But it has to be consistent every time. Not every time, but most of the time with that uh, difference. So with Sutton, you see that one difference, and that's pretty much it. Um, there's, he's got some sloppier signatures, but the mainstays of his signature stay every time. Um, so yeah, I definitely think, yeah, I agree with you. I think he's signing this stuff. It just, uh, he does have that variation. Andy, what are you thinking down there? Huh? Are you going to disagree <laughs> with us? No, you know what? I was going back and forth. Um, and Mike just kind of ruined it for me because I was <laughs> thinking, but, um, the, the, I did look at the S first off. I think his first name looks terrible. I think it looks like Assy. I think it's A-S-E. It looks like. I, I don't see Dawn anywhere in there, but that has always been consistent. And like Mike said, the S was always a symbol for me in the first T, how it was always laid out. But the one thing that kind of jumped out at me is a lot of times he's his certified stuff at the end. It looks like an EU mm -hmm. instead of the O N. Yeah. That's what was jumping out at me a lot. I, I've but, seen, uh, well, his, his sticker autos don't do that all the time. But yeah, maybe his like PSA certified stuff. I don't know if maybe for a paid signing where he's got somebody in front of him or maybe he would take more time with that. Um, but there's something going on causing that variation. Um, but I can tell you from looking at Zimmer's, which Zimmer's wife signed for him for years, 
like there's more than one variation on a secretarial signature. You're, you're going to be able to point to multiple things that match up each time that that main variation is used. And it's just not the case here. Like it's, there's, there's not more evidence you can point to that's consistent, which like there's definitely some little variations, but they don't match up that every time this S is used, these variations follow. Mm. That's, that's not there. Yeah. And, and if, if you put the two S's, the, the triangle and the loop S side by side, you'd say, you know, that, that'd stick out like a sore thumb and say mm -hmm. immediately that's signed by two different people. Right. But the more you look at it, you're like, well, wait a minute. Cause I, I thought the same thing when I pulled up the first two, I'm like, there's a definite, you know, variation Difference. here. Right. But then I started diving more into it. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. This is so consistent with the other letters. I, I still can't figure out what's going on with the S. So like you said, it's, I think some days he, he forgets either how he wants to sign or there's some kind of <laughs> condition yeah. that causes him to, you know, not be able to follow through on a, on a smooth stroke. And he's just like, okay, I, today I'm doing triangle because I can't, I can't make a loop without, yep. you know, causing it to be all jittery. It could be just speed, speed signing versus slow sign. There's a million things it could be. And we've talked about uh, signature variation a lot. And uh, we've even talked to about with Neri, who works directly with celebrities who sign. And we asked him, you know, what causes signature variation? And he can't give us a straight answer because there's no straight answer. Um, people do what they do. And sometimes there's no explanation of why they do what they do. All we can do is take the evidence and say, well, if you're saying that those aren't authentic, you're also saying that freaking these certifieds, you know, like one fifth of his certifieds aren't authentic and were signed by somebody else, which has happened before. I'm not saying it's impossible, but um, with baseball players, it tends to be unlikely. You're more likely to see that with celebrities. Yeah. Um, and some, something on certified too, like we, we pulled up one example, you know, of a certified card, but I've seen it in the clubhouse. Rick and Keel came in with a box that was this thick, you know, and they were three, three wide. And he just sat there and signed them and signed them. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, half of those, if they were Don Sutton, he's like big loopy ass. And then, you know, somebody sits down and starts talking to him and he's like, okay, triangle, 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 triangle. Like if, if you sit in the clubhouse, you know, before you pitch and you have an hour and you want to bust out as many as possible, you're going to simplify your autograph. So when right. we pull up one example of a certified that's loopy, you know, there may be, you know, a hundred variations on that card of, you know, between loop and triangle, just because he sat there and he's like, I'm getting tired and you right. know, whatever, somebody's talking to him, getting distracted. I want to finish this up. So when, when you look at a certified card, you got to remember that it, they're not just signing one certified card. They're right. signing, thousands of certified cards and sometimes they'll try and get them all done as quick as possible sometimes they'll go he may sign one card today and take six months and in that six months maybe a, his autograph changed a little bit and this is why example authentication is kind of hit and miss like psa has a lot of trouble jsa has a lot of trouble if you're going off of just what a signature is supposed to look like uh you can say that it's probably not authentic, but you may be wrong. Um, for instance, I just saw somebody post a Jordan in a forum group that they got IP in the 90s. And they said they got in a basketball as he was going in to play. And I think he was a pretty reputable dude. And that thing looked fake as hell. But he just signed it on the way in. And there's no way he could sell that to anybody because they wouldn't believe that it was real. And it would never, ever be certified. Um, there's a battle there and, and I, I like what the authentication groups are doing, putting people in these actual signings, you know, having them witness, that's a smart idea. But when it comes to judging stuff, you get sent in, um, situational signing is an important part of that. What was the, where was it signed? How was it, like, what was the person doing when it was signed? Um, and where, where was the person in their life? Eugene Krantz is another good example. PSA recently denied a Eugene Krantz signature. Well, Eugene has some health problems and totally changed the signature after the health problems. We saw the photo of him signing with the new signature, yet PSA said it was not authentic. 
So there's, there's a problem there when it comes to authentication. Uh, there's no clear solution, but definitely taking in these environmental and new evidence when it comes in, when it comes to in-person signings, taking in all that information and putting it together is an important key to that. It, it, it'd be interesting to send, you know, two variations, the, the loop signature and a, a triangle signature to like Slab City and see if they both came back. If At one the same time? Back. Right. Yeah. The same person authenticating it? Yep. Yeah, that would be interesting. You, you got to remember, I mean, Sutton's, I believe, is a broadcaster for the Braves. Yep. So, so I mean, if he's working 162 games out of the year, I mean, he's either going to come back from a road trip and have, you know, a thousand things to sign, or he's on a homestand and he's only getting 10 or, say, 20 a day and he can do his regular signature, or he's going to rifle through that big pile that he gets when he gets home. He's yeah. also Sign 75 years old, too. Yeah, he's getting up there in age. Yeah, yeah he's at 75? Yep. Yeah. So we, you can't really pinpoint what it is. We'll, we'll never know, you know, what causes that. But just taking all the evidence, and, and that's why we do these segments, to kind of show you guys how to form your decisions on authenticity. Um, you have to take in all the evidence, including the, the environment it was signed in, and um, – yeah, make your decisions based on all the evidence, not just the example of the signature you're basing it off of. Um, so let's uh, do our votes, guys. Definitely authentic, probably authentic, neutral, probably fake, definitely fake. We might have some different answers on this one, but uh, Michael, let you go first. I'm going to say probably authentic. Okay, I'm going to say definitely authentic. Because I've seen enough evidence, especially with the O's and the, um, the similarities you pointed out. Um, I see no reason to think they're not authentic. The S's are literally scattered among certified autos and tra certified trading cards. So I, I, I will say definitely authentic. Um, Andy. Well, I'm going to say probably. probably. I'm sorry. Um, what, was the, what was not the definite? So you have definitely yeah, authentic, probably, probably yeah. authentic, yeah. neutral. Yeah. I'm going to go to probably. Okay. I, I was leaning towards not, but, you know. You can go neutral. Uh, yeah. Captain S <laughs> over here convinced me the other way. So. <laughs> Chase? I, I think they're definitely authentic. I think that, you know, like we said, time, depending on what, how much he's doing at one time, he's 75, he can get tired. You know, he can start at one S and then by the end of the day be at a different S. So right. I, I think they're definitely authentic. So that's a tie. We're going to probably we're going to do probably authentic. That's what the group uh, comes up with. Probably authentic. We're going to lean that way in the middle. Probably, um, definitely. So probably, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, our diagnosis is probably authentic on the Don Sutton TTMs, which is good news for people that paid money. You didn't get scammed. Probably. It's our opinion. You didn't get scammed. <laughs> <laughs> Got to throw that out there. <laughs> Watch for more coming back later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that will be uh sending some more off nice we'll see what you get in right um maybe you'll get a square d <laughs> or, or s sorry um moving on to our ad and mike has our ad for this show all right tonight's giveaway is sponsored by slab city sports cards and collectibles our friend Garrett and his wife Tiffany run a Facebook page that will send in your stuff to get authenticated by PSA DNA. And today's giveaway is this little bad boy. Nice. It's a original uh, official batting order from the Milwaukee Brewers from July 23rd, 2013. Uh, when they played the San Diego Padres. It is an official card signed by Ron Renicki, who was the manager of the Milwaukee Brewers. So that was actually hanging up in the dugout during the game. Yep. Uh, actually, no, that's a, that's, a, that's a manager card, right? So that was, in, that was a manager's. It was manager a uh, could have been in the clubhouse, but clubhouse, this is yeah. a, an official one. Usually the ones that are handed to the umpires are folded because right. they stick them in their pocket. Right. Um, but that was donated by Garrett and Tiffany over at Slab City. They do have a basic submission coming up on uh, June 20th for $15. You can send in most items. Um, some players are obviously premiums, but if you want to get something just basic authenticated, 
uh, not graded as far as the autograph, but a, just a basic authentication. Uh, it will be encased. Uh, if you have a card, you know, it will be authenticated and slabbed and sent back to you. So get in touch with Garrett. Uh, our link is on our page, graffersaa.com. Yep. And it's a Facebook page. You check out and message in there. Um, so uh, the giveaway for, obviously, is the lineup card. And the question is, what is your most awkward experience with autographing? So this can be in person, this could be TTM, but something weird and awkward that happened to you. Explain the situation. We want to hear them. Um, I'm sure we're going to get some good ones for this. And you'll win that piece of baseball history. Now you're wondering who won the giveaway from last show? Well, that would be Rob P. Rob P. You won the Star Tiger one month subscription along with a magnifier for your phone. So congratulations, that'll be shipped out to you ASAP. Um, if you guys want to enter the giveaway this week, all you have to do is go to our website, graffersaa.com. It's graffersaa.com. Answer the question, fill out the form, and bam, you're entered. It's as easy as that, guys. Um, moving on, we, uh, we're going to talk about some fanatic feedback. Fanatic feedback is a segment where we actually take questions from you via voicemail and answer them on the show. And here is our question for today. Hey guys, great show. My name's Rob and uh, my son Braden and I do a lot of graphing together, uh, mainly in person. However, we've also got into the, the TTM autographing a lot lately. I did it a lot as a kid, but uh, now it's kind of his turn to, to pick it up. And uh, I was wondering if you guys, what, what advice you guys have for kids who are getting into um, TTM autographing. So what advice do we have for kids getting to autographing uh, TTM? Um, we, this is our number one. We talk about this all the time. Take advantage of what you can. Don't lie, but take advantage of what you can. And if you're a kid, play up that you're a kid. Um, <laughs> a lot of people um, have different things going on that they can write about, but uh, use that to your advantage and, um, you know, I'm not saying write worse, but don't do a form letter if you're a kid. If you're a kid, you're going to benefit from handwriting a letter. It may take a little more time, uh, but I think it can even be shorter and you'd get a better response as long as it's handwritten because they're going to realize that you're a kid and not uh, some guy, some, some, some 30, 40 year old guy out here sending out form letters just to get autographs. Um, <laughs> you guys got any tips for the youngsters uh, doing TTMs? Uh, not, be polite. For, yeah, there you go. Be polite, but more for the dad. Um, make it enjoyable for your kid uh, because he didn't watch the guys you grew up watching playing sports. So he might not want to write to, you know, Frank Tanana because he has no idea who Frank Tanana is. Um, try and make it relatable to something he sees on TV, a movie, sports. Um, make it relate to him so it can be you know personal to him not not just your collection you can even expand both of your knowledge like you, you can go both ways with that so you could say i'm going to watch something that you're interested in and we can write to the person but i want you to watch this perfect game that david wills threw back in 1998 and that way you would pre appreciate that person and then we can write to both people so you can actually intermingle it that way too. If you do want to write to some people that, that you enjoy and you think your son would enjoy if, if, if they knew who they were, or daughter, uh, if they knew who they were, you could actually share some history that way. You learn some stuff about some newer people that maybe are in TV shows or newer athletes, and they can learn some history about the game. Um, I wouldn't push kids to watch something or do something they don't you know, naturally like. But as long as there's a little bit of interest there, I think you, as long as you, you can broaden your mind, um, it's always good to look at things in a different pair of eyes. Kind of, you know, people get stuck in their own generation sometimes. My generation's the best, and I like this, and everybody else has to like this. And um, I think and, most parents get know that, though. Most parents live this every day. They and part of what time. Mike was saying, too, about the make it enjoyable, definitely have, you know, the kids have their name on the envelope coming back. Because I know that's one of the things my son loves whenever he gets mail. 
Yep. Yeah, when you get older and start getting bills, you're not going to want that. But, you know, <laughs> you know, when you're a kid and you're getting a letter, you know, that's that's a big deal. He runs to the, you know, he'll, he'll, when, when school was in, he would love to go get the mail and see what was coming in. And, yeah. That's a whole experience, right? Uh, we always, like, the quote I used to say is, it's like Christmas every day in your mailbox. Mm. So, as a kid, that means even more. Like, and as an adult, it's like, okay, it's Christmas. As a kid, it's like, it's freaking Christmas. It takes it up a notch. So like, that's a, like good, what, a good idea yeah. with the name. Like what Zane said, too, use it, use it as a teaching tool, too, because what are you learning in school? Oh, we're learning about the Kennedy assassination. All right. But you can write to this person, and how cool would that be if you got something back to take that you know, into the teacher and say, look, you know, here's this person was there, and yep. this is what they wrote, and, you know, he said that Oswald didn't do it. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> that's, that's a cool thing. You know, that's, I love writing to history people because of that, because that's, that's a piece of history and they can take that, you know, and learn about what you're writing to. Fun fact. I did that in high school. So I started TTMing in high school and uh, my social studies teacher, actually, it was some advanced social studies class wasn't in general. But he uh, said, yeah, if you can get some people to respond and, and send stuff, I'll give you extra credit. So I just started going through the textbook, just like finding names, cross-referencing with Star Archive back then. <laughs> and it was free. Um, Star Archive and wrote to like three or four people. I think Gl Gl uh, Gloria Steinem responded and signed some stuff. I got extra credit for that. Uh, Winton Marcellus. <laughs> uh, oh yeah 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 it's the only, it's the only reason i passed the class I, um <laughs> but i wrote to winton marcellus and he was it only took him uh like 10 years to respond <laughs> at that point i was graduated yeah. and i've uh, been out of school for like um i don't know eight nine years so <laughs> uh it didn't come in very useful there but uh he did sign a couple eight by tens for me but yeah that, that's definitely a good teaching tool i agree uh, so, got other? yeah, my advice, I mean, if you're a kid, number one, don't send the porn people because <laughs> that'd probably be a bad thing to do. Um, my thing is for, I mean, Dave, sending you, talking yeah, to you Dave, <laughs> yeah, Dave Jr. Out there, no, um, I would, if you're just starting off and you, I would send the people in your age group. I mean, if you start sending to like Nickelodeon shows that you like, or even YouTube stars that you kind of like that are kind of in your bracket i mean i think you have a better chance of getting a better response because it's you know if you're 12 years old and you send it to a a child star that's you know 10 12 13 years old they might respond better to you because you're in the same age bracket I th i'd say if you're honest with the older like if you're obviously if a kid is writing to um i'm trying to think of an older star keith hernandez um he didn't watch him play but you yeah. could say my dad showed me highlights or my dad showed me game six of the world series or, you know, I watched Seinfeld. I watched the episode of Seinfeld <laughs> and like, you could work it that way and, and still make that work. I think, but um, just be truthful guys. Don't lie in your TTMs. Do we have to talk about the Tom Kenny SpongeBob story every time <laughs> um, some guy faked having uh, cancer and Tom Kenny showed up to his house and said, I'm here to see the little boy that has cancer. And um, like a 45-year-old man said, oh, I'm sorry, that was me. I was lying just to get an autograph. <laughs> Terrible story. Don't be that guy, okay? Mm -hmm. Be truthful. But, um, you know, I stress that so much. Be truthful in your TTMs. Um, anyways, if we don't have any more, we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, thanks for the question, by the way. Appreciate it. Uh, if you guys want to send a question in, just go to graphersaa.com. Again, everything's on that website, graphersaa.com. Click Fanatic Feedback. You can record on your phone or your computer if you have a microphone. Real easy, guys. Just hit record. Boom. It's in there, and we'll answer it on the show. Um, okay. Let's move on to the Reaper Report. We have a list of people who passed away over the last two weeks. We have Kiz, Ken Osman. Annie Glenn, who I'm surprised was still uh, alive, but she was the wife of John Glenn. There's actually been several documentary series and um, TV shows, I think, even about her over the last few years. 
Um, Jerry Sloan, very notable TTM signer, passed away. He was in bad health for a while. So, um, Lynn Shelton, uh, Fred Willard, Richard Hurd, and Bob Watson. So those are the people that passed away over the last two weeks. And uh, it's time for promotions. So uh, Chase, do you want to promote some stuff? Uh, check out my YouTube channel, Chase and Eat. I got a uh, Instagram as well. Anything that's there is there. Here is there. Same. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I got uh, every every Wednesday Q and A Wednesday. This week is uh, Bobby Witt. And the best way to get to Chase's YouTube channel is on our website, graphersaa.com, because I've literally tried to find your channel before. And it brings up like credit card reviews and stuff from like Chase Bank. <laughs> like it's impossible to find your channel. So like, I, I the, go to the website. Just go to the website and click the link. It'll take you right there. Andy? If you haven't been to my YouTube channel in the last like eight weeks, don't go because there's nothing new on there. So other than that, I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> A man of few words. Mikey? Um... Real quick, we forgot Eddie Sutton, uh, longtime basketball coach at uh, mm. Oklahoma State, passed away. But anyways, uh, check out Autographs for a Cure, www.autographsforacure.com. Making a few tweaks there, trying to get some stuff going, and uh, hopefully have some 8x10s coming in. I uh, got some little certified little COAs, some Autographs for a Cure certified Stickers. Look who's making trash COAs now. Ooh. Mikey's in the game. <laughs> Trying to be all fancy. <laughs> oh, but uh, I should have some stuff coming in. Like I mentioned, uh, people with the RSVPs agreeing to sign some 8 by 10 So uh, if those come back, I'll definitely get some stuff uh, put on the site. So Very cool. Very cool. Uh, I just want to thank you to all the new listeners. We got a little rush of new listeners over the last few weeks. Um, I appreciate you guys listening and uh, uh, enter these contests, guys. Win some free stuff. It's real easy. I promise. Um, obviously, go check out bargainhistory.com to get some autographs on eBay. Go check out fabricfobs.com to go get celebrity pieces of clothing stuck in keychains. And uh, that's all I got. So you take care, all of you autograph addicts. <laughs>